Of course, it's not always feasible to hire a PR agency, as often you may have zero budget. But the good news is, there are a number of things you can do yourself. Let's go through a list of what PR agencies do and learn from their expertise. Market research is all about understanding what is going on around you. Taking some time to do market research will allow you to make sure you're creating a good and relevant campaign that will resonate with your target audience. And it will also allow you to learn from other organizations' mistakes and successes. If you have a budget, you can use polling or market research companies to do this work for you. But these can be very costly. So if you have no budget, you need to think outside the box and start gathering information from free resources and tools. Find out what is being said about your topic, where it's being said, how it's being said, by whom it's being said, and when it's being said. Of course, one of the easiest ways of doing this is by using Google Search, but it's also worth setting up a Google Alert to get the latest news on your topic. As a journalist, I use this free and simple feature a lot, and it can be equally useful for you as an activist. Google Alerts work very well if you're focusing on one topic. For instance, I was working on CNN's Leading Women show. To ensure I got all the latest news on women in business, I set up several Google Alerts including gender equality, women in business, women, pay gap, and gender pay gap. This allowed me to jump on news items and come up with story ideas. As an activist, this can also help you in your media outreach. SurveyMonkey is a tool that you can use to create your custom-made surveys and send to your contacts and ask them directly what they think about your performance. It's also a useful tool for when you want to do original data gathering to get statistics and quotes for your reports, and that can be used for media outreach work. If you want to get more people to engage with your Facebook updates, you need to look at the data and audit what is working and what isn't for the campaign. This is known as a social media audit. Have a look on your Facebook page and click on Facebook Insights. What are some of the trends you notice? Who is your audience? Are certain topics more interesting to your audience than others? Do you notice you get more likes with a photo and a pithy quote posted early in the morning? Or does your audience share more videos at night? Do articles with detailed status updates get more shares? Take into account language, tone, timing, and the location of your audience. Adjust your Facebook posts accordingly based on the trends you're noticing. Time your posts to the most appropriate time zones for your audience. At one news organization I worked for, we noticed that if we shared politics and business stories earlier in the week, then they got more Facebook likes and shares. Meanwhile, fashion and entertainment stories did very well on Thursdays and Fridays. We also noticed if we posted too many stories within an hour, people would unlike our page. Try testing this yourself with some content and see how much is too much among your audience. Be sure to mix up your content with videos, photos, and quotes. One thing to remember about Facebook is that they're always changing their algorithm. This makes it difficult to know how to maximize your post. That's why you should be sure to stay up to date on the latest Facebook developments. Twitter Analytics is a free tool that can help you measure success on Twitter by showing you all of your interaction and how each tweet has performed, as in seen or created interactivity. You can see impression numbers. For instance, this shows the number of individual people who noticed your tweet. You can get even more detail with breakdowns of when and where each of these impressions happened. Take a look and check out how your content is performing do tweets with photos get more retweets? Who are your followers? Are they in a certain time zone? If so, make sure your schedule and your tweets are matched accordingly. If you aren't impressed with the quality of your followers, ask yourself how you can tweak your content to make more of an impact when it comes to attracting a relevant audience. After having a look at your followers on Twitter analytics, consider unfollowing people who aren't aligned with your brand. Be sure to follow people who are aligned with what you want to achieve. Social media takes a lot of time to do well, and most large organizations either hire a PR agency to do this work for them 
or they hire in-house social media managers to run their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. But hiring someone to run your social media 24-7 is not something most of us can afford. So to succeed on social media, you need to use your time and resources wisely. I'll discuss social media strategy in more detail in Chapter 4. As a social media manager, I spent a lot of time planning content and trying to get a good grasp of my client and the issues around their campaign. To save time, I schedule about 10 tweets each morning on Hootsuite. On Facebook, I schedule three posts a day using the site's scheduling tool. I also write a weekly report tracking my output and impact on each social media account. I highlight the most popular tweets, mentions, while also reporting Facebook likes and shares. I also track our weekly Twitter followers and Facebook page likes. A weekly report can help you track your progress and serve as a tool to hone your future content. Writing and distributing press releases is one of the most important functions of PR agencies. That's why we've devoted an entire chapter to the art of writing a press release. Always take into account the amount of time it will take to compose a release and get it signed off. Sometimes, when writing a press release, you will have to work with a number of different organizations in getting it signed off. Now let's talk about copywriting. Any project, business, or campaign needs a lot of written material. One of the goals of PR is to have consistent, coherent, and well-written copy. It's always best to get your colleagues to proofread and give feedback on written content before you publish it. It goes without saying that poor grammar can negatively impact your brand and take away from your campaign. If you have a budget, you may consider hiring a freelance copywriter or agency for one-off projects. Organizations even hire copywriters to create content for newsletters, website copy, press releases, as well as apps and SMS messages. MailChimp allows you to create and send an email to a large number of users. It is free to use until you have more than 2,000 contacts, and it also lets you create beautiful newsletters and most importantly, it gives you really detailed analytics of your emails so you can plan when is best to send them and ensure people actually open them. You can also determine what subject line is most popular and much, much more. If you're working for an advocacy organization with members, this can be a very useful tool for reaching your audience and making the most impact. At the trade association I worked for, we use this tool to communicate with our 1,000 member companies. We decided to send newsletters out on Tuesday mornings instead of Friday afternoons based on MailChimp's analytics. Again, make sure you analyze and make decisions based on the data provided. Find out what is resonating with your audience and when they are engaging the most with your content. Each organization, campaign, or business will have key people who will need to address the public or their specialist audiences from time to time. It is important that these speeches are well written and that the message is communicated clearly in a tone that resonates with your audience. As a press officer in Brussels, I had to write external speeches for the director of our organization. They would take several days to write and get approval from my colleagues. Let's run through a mini step-by-step -step guide of how you should approach speech writing. Before you begin writing, start by figuring out the context of your speech. Who are you writing your speech for? What is your speech about? How long does it have to be? Once you've answered those questions, like any good book or film, you need to identify the structure, a beginning, middle, and end. Make sure your message is hammered home in your conclusion. Another tip, always write your introduction last. Get feedback from others in your organization and practice aloud in front of the mirror. For more tips on speech writing, check out the links in the extra materials section at the end of this lesson. Events are an excellent opportunity to showcase what your organization has been doing. Events can be big or small, from an informal report launch in your office with a presentation to a panel discussion with some experts. You may even wish to host a big black tie gala or an awards show. No matter what event you host, you should always identify key journalists to invite to these types of events. They are an excellent opportunity to meet journalists face-to-face -face 
and potentially pitch some other story ideas. All good events require a lot of planning. No one ever wants to attend badly planned or boring events, least of all journalists. To help you plan and create great events, I have made a special resource pack for event planning below. Let's talk about crisis management. I can only wish that you will not need this at all, or at least at the start. But hey, better to be prepared just in case. Crises come in all shapes and forms. Imagine a scandal or unexpected crisis of any sort. You need to manage it as fast as you can or face the consequences and the damages. The best approach is always to meet as a team and decide what your response to a crisis is before you make a public announcement or to even start fixing the problem. Better to give a good response than a rushed one, which probably would make things worse. For this to happen, you need to make sure that you have your colleagues' personal contact details so that you can reach them outside of work if you need to. If you're a solo campaigner or activist, then discuss and test your ideas and how to deal with them with a trusted source. This will likely prevent you from making a mistake. Now let's find out how you write a really good press release.